Hi, and welcome back to Beneath the Surface. My book is officially out. Only say good things. You can buy it at bookstores anywhere. Here it is. It is now out. The time is finally here. And today I'm going to be going through the introduction. This is my first solo podcast. I'm going to read a little bit from the book for you now that I finally can and kind of talk about my headspace and why I think this book was important for me to write. And hopefully there are lots of different nuggets and pieces that could maybe help you or a friend as well. So let's dive in. Introduction. Hey, it is January 26 and my book released on Tuesday. I'm so excited. And now I'm going to go through the book with you guys on the podcast. And this episode, I want to just have a solo episode and talk about the introduction to my book. I'm going to start with a little part of it that I wanted to read for you guys. For some of you, it'll be the first time hearing anything from inside the book. So I'm very happy to be reading this. I spent a decade of my life at the Playboy Mansion. First, I was just a guest, a dazzled, starry-eyed girl at a party. Then, I became a girlfriend. I became a member of arguably the most high-profile, visible, modern harem in existence. I became a Playboy centerfold, that holy grail of success in the Playboy world, on newsstands across the country. I became the fiancé of one of the most powerful, controversial, mythical men in the public imagination. And then I left and became his runaway bride, the only one he ever chased after. Eventually, I became his wife. And at the end, I became his caretaker. And when he died, I became a widow and a symbol. Officially, first as vice president of the Hugh Hefner Foundation, and then as president, It was my job to keep the foundation well-funded and well-regarded. Unofficially, it was also my job to embody the Playboy myth, to embody the Hugh Hefner myth. He had worked so hard for more than seven decades to, to control the narrative of who he was and how he was. And in his mind, perpetuating the story was the most valuable thing he left me when he died. I've only ever told a small slice of my story. I've only ever told the shiny, glamorous parts the parts that people wanted to hear, the good pieces. Partly, this was because I didn't want to see myself as a victim. Partly, this was because I didn't want to upset his family. Mostly, this was because I'd made a promise to Hef. So the reason that the book is called Only Say Good Things is because um, when Hef was older and... We had a lot of conversations about the future and he wanted to um, remind me to say only good things after he died. As he was getting older, he was thinking about his legacy and how things were going to be when he wasn't here, here anymore. And he just reminded me, when I'm gone, please just say only good things about me. And I said that I would. And that's the title of the book. And I kept that promise to him for so long, for almost six years now. And I just think it's time to tell my truth, tell my version of events. And Hef did for so long control the narrative of his life, like so meticulously. Like he had so many scrapbooks and he would always pull articles and just crafted with the media this entire image of himself that he perpetuated for so long. And I think that since Me Too and all these other things that are that are happening, more people are having voices and these people in power, they're having to give up part of the narrative. So I am so happy to give my side, tell my truth, and... You know, I am so part of Hef's foundation. I'm the president of Hef's foundation. There are two other people on the board with me. It was a hard talk, but they gave me their blessing. Hef's foundation is based on First Amendment rights, freedom of speech. So it only makes sense that they would allow me to 
be able to use my voice. And I got their blessing. And I've been trying to use my voice more and more. Being at the mansion, it was suppressed. I just went along with the program. I went along with whatever Hef wanted. I was his hype girl. I was his cheerleader. I liked all the things he liked. I did all the things he wanted to do. I lost myself completely at the mansion. And now that I've been out in a way and trying to unlearn things that I learned there that aren't useful or valuable, I realized that I need to use my voice more. And that was a large part of this podcast. Starting this podcast to speak more. I even, there's even, in a way, I feel like, oh, I was smarter even before I was at the mansion at school studying psychology. I was about to graduate with my degree, but as I was at the mansion and, you know, pretty girls just go along with the program. <laughs> it's kind of like that. Don't speak unless you're spoken to kind of mentality. So I feel like I lost my voice and I feel like it dumbed me down. So with this podcast and with this book, I am trying to be louder and use my voice and learn. And on top of it all, I want to try and help people. I've had people write to me who have been in abusive relationships or relationships with narcissistic people or people that just don't make them feel good or make them feel small. So if this book can help anybody along the way, I am, I'm happy for it to help people. And also if this book can make anyone feel a little less lonely, if this podcast can make anyone feel a little less lonely, Another reason I started the podcast was because I spent a lot of time alone. The mansion taught me like not to trust many people. I don't have many friends. I'm very introverted. So this book and this podcast is also for you um, to hopefully feel a little less alone. And I just want to say that I love you guys so much. A lot of you have been with me since the beginning, supporting me through all phases of my life and versions of myself. I'm very grateful. I love the people who support me more than anything. I've had a lot of strangers become friends, lifelong friends. And for that, I'll always be grateful. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. It's finally here. I hope that you like it. Let me know what you think. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I love you with all my heart and thank you so much. <laughs>